The following podcast is recorded and produced by the Podcast Precinct in affiliation with the network at BICBP-radio.com. The Podcast Precinct. Consistency. Creativity. Culture. With the third pick in the 2000 NBA Draft, the Los Angeles Clippers select Darius Miles of East St. Louis High School. And with the first pick in the NBA Draft, the Retroactive Sports Podcast selects, out of North Carolina, Johnny Townsend. Thank you. Uh, thank you for this is a moment I've been waiting for. A big shout out to the commissioner, Andrew Lenz, over there. Uh, but I regret to inform you that uh, I'm not going to amount to anything. How are you going to go out? <laughs> it might uh, be sad and whimpering. <laughs> it might be too soon. Are you going to go out Len Bias style? Or are you going? Oh, to- man. Yeah. Hopefully not. Yeah. Uh, man. Right. Still not as bad as well yesterday. <laughs> Uh, but welcome to uh, to the show. We appreciate all you listening. Today we're going to be talking about NBA busts. That's right, ones who uh, players who, for whatever reason, didn't pan out how we thought they would. Yeah, I got ones that I just probably watched in college and and stuff. Or a lot of mine are ones that had a lot of promise in college and then kind of. I sort of I, I have. Think- uh, I have one, two, three, four, I have five that I want to talk about specifically. Uh, but I try, except for one, I try to sort of stay away from the uh, injuries thing because that's not really their fault. Yeah. I, I the only one, I, I only have one, and I'll talk about him first, just because I thought he had so much promise and it was such a bummer. I kind of went through, because I would say 90. Now I've watched a lot of drafts throughout yes. the years. My father was a huge basketball fan. I felt a lot of drafts left windows open everywhere I went. <laughs> so, but when I f- probably got into the NBA draft, of course it was like the first, or it was like one of the greatest drafts ever. And we redrafted it last year was the 96 NBA draft. Yeah. That's yeah. That's the go back and just be blown away by the number of hall of famers in it. Yeah. So I kind of went through like 96 to 2003. Yeah, all mine are definitely I, from uh, late 90s, early 2000s. Mine that were like, hey, I really think this guy is going to be something. And then he just wasn't. Yeah. Never, for, for different never, reasons. Never was. Well, there's some you might be like, really? But then I thought maybe because it was just my overhyping them. Well, Andrew's also the guy who constantly likes to send me a text message every once in a while and say, hey, do you know the Hornets picked this year, uh, this certain year, and who they could have picked? And I'm like, I promise you, Andrew, I'm well aware of these things. <laughs> I just told them about that at work. <laughs> they didn't know either. And I was like, yeah, I felt bad. I sent it to Johnny. We did. <laughs> we did. Uh, did I tell you that story? I don't know. I don't think so. Uh, so. Uh, <laughs> Like my friend at work landed, we talk a lot of basketball. He's very yeah. good basketball. And we were talking about the upcoming finals. And he was like, I really don't. He was like, as much as I hate the Celtics, I kind of don't want the Mavericks to win. And yeah, because so just so people know, you're near I, the Dallas area. Yes, I'm in the Dallas Fort Worth area. And he's like, because I got to hear it from my friends. And Landon yeah. is a Grizzlies fan, he's from Memphis even though I don't think he should be because he didn't know who Jerry the King Lawler is, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, <laughs> that's a very big frustration of mine. Yeah. Uh, so I was, he's like, I don't want them to win. Cause I don't want to hear everybody at work. I don't want to, you know, hear that. And I'm like, yeah, I get you. And I was like, my only other friend that watches basketball is Johnny and he's a Hornets fan. And then I, I'm not going to lie, Johnny. I was like, so I guess I'm not going to kind of have that problem for quite some time. No, you won't. Uh, I don't think you ever get as if, if for some miracle of God, uh, the Hornets actually make the playoffs, even the play in, I'm going to be very excited. <laughs> That's where we are as a franchise. If we make the play in, I consider it a giant success. <laughs> hey, there you go. 
Keep your standards low, kids. Keep your <laughs> yes, that's yes. Which is what I told any uh any of my girlfriends I've ever had. Um, I want to start this off though with I want to get the injury one out of the way. Okay, because because I have one that I would would say was injuries definitely derailed what he could have been. <laughs> he had a lot of hype coming out of Ohio. Ohio I can't even say the state. Uh-huh. Ohio. That's the word I'm trying to say. Ohio State. Uh, Greg oh. Oden. Yes. Uh, he gets a really terrible rep because he just couldn't stay healthy. Uh, but I, when this guy was healthy, this dude well, was really, really good. That's a- even in the NBA. Even in the NBA, he was good on these games where he could play. But uh, this body just would not hold up. That's a huge what if with those Trailblazers. Because what is it when Roy Aldridge and Odin all played? They only played seventy two games together, and they were sixty two and ten. Yes, that's a heck of a trio. And Brendan Roy is another one whose injuries just derailed his career. Yeah, he and he was so good too. He was crazy good. Uh, yeah, you're right. Comeback, but it's hard to play when you got like a degenerative knee disease and there's like no cartilage in there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you kind of need your knees for basketball. So, uh, but uh, yeah, I'm going to throw Greg Oden as my first one I want to talk about. Just uh, man, this was I think this was the saddest one for me because. If you've seen any interviews with him later, after his career was over, just how much regret and shame he has for something that he had no control over. Mm-hmm. He he talks about how awful he feels for the fans and stuff who really believed, you know, in their team and how he feels he let so many people down. I just have a soft spot for this guy because it's just uh, it really affected him too emotionally. Well, I don't know how it couldn't. He is. Um, now the director of basketball operations for but for Butler for the University of Butler. There you go. There you go. Uh, because he seems like a really cool, like a nice guy. And uh, when you talk to him, like I've talked to him, you know, I talk to him all the time. Yeah, talk to I, him. Got him. Check out my cell phone. <laughs> Text him just the other day. He said, and he responded, "Who is this? Uh, how did you get my number?" <laughs> <laughs> Why are you doing this, Johnny? <laughs> He never played more than sixty-one games. Yeah, I mean, God, how so, how sad is that? Because when he did play, he put up numbers. He's a double-double waiting to happen. Yeah, he. Geez. Yeah, he never played more than twenty, like twenty-four minutes a game, too. Yeah, because they were trying to watch out. Because coming out of college, he was already sort of dealing with injuries. I never thought Mike Connolly would be the better player. Out of those two, when they came out of Ohio State, just uh, isn't it just wild that he still plays? Mike Conley, and he <laughs> contributes. He doesn't just play. Yeah, <laughs> what I saw on the Timberwolves, I was like, "Is that okay?" I'm, I'm getting too old. <laughs> yeah, I saw. Um, it was they were talking to Mike Conley, and who's the other one who's still playing? It's in his draft class that they talked to. Oh, I gotta look that up. Yeah, who is it? Yeah. There's like six players still playing for my draft class, but they interviewed two of them. No, oh, there's Durant, five. Durant, Har- Durant, and Harford. Durant. Har- I think Al Harford, Horford was the other one. Uh, uh, they were talking to him and Conley, and they said, "Can you name the other players from your draft class who still play?" And they got them all because there's only like five. <laughs> yeah, Thaddeus Young still playing. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, Greg Oden was my first one. Who do you want to talk about first, Andrew? So mine was, even though he's later in the 96 draft, uh, John Wallace out of Syracuse. So I watched John Wallace in those final four, and I was like, wow, this guy's going to be something. And then I remember the Knicks drafting him because they were like, the Knicks need forwards. The Knicks need yeah. forwards which was very odd, but I think they lost Anthony Mason and stuff at this point. And Charles Oakley was getting older. Oh, shout out. I mean, Telly passed, but Anthony Mason was awesome. Yes. And I really thought this guy, I know he was drafted later. I thought this guy was going to be something way better. This could be just young Andrew, just looking at a guy and trying to be an NBA scout and then just falling apart. And he just never, really became anything he had a decent career 
I mean, he played one, two, three, four, five, six, seven seasons, but he just never was what I thought he was going to be coming out of. You know, matter of fact, he's so bad. Wikipedia doesn't even put up <laughs> his NBA career. <laughs> I'm not even lying. <laughs> trying to look at some things, but ah, oh, yeah. And he, I didn't know he played. He played the role of Lonnie in Spike Lee's "He Got Game," one of my favorite basketball movies. But yeah, John Wallace out of Syracuse. I don't know. I think that was just me overhyping. Somebody picked that like 18th, and it's hard to live up to anything in this draft. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm trying to get all my stats up. So give me just a second here. No problem. Especially if I could spell, that'd be great. Okay, all right, I'm ready to go here. I can't make uh, that one. So my next, uh, the next one I want. You're gonna notice a pattern from here on out, and that's look. Uh, I'm a Carolina fan, and I'm a Charlotte Hornets fan. They're going to they're going across a lot here. Uh, so let's start out with let's start out with uh, Marvin Williams. Marvin Williams was even coming into North Carolina into UNC. He was hyped. Like this guy was supposed to be like the second coming of basketball. How hyped he was, and he couldn't even make the starting lineup of the of the Tar Heels, right? But people were like, he has so much potential. He was so good in high school, so he gets drafted by the Hawks, who could have taken Chris Paul if I'm remembering right. And, and they needed a, and they needed a point guard, <laughs> so, uh, but to take Marvin Williams and in fairness to Marvin Williams, he did end up having a pretty a decent career as like a starter slash backup, but nowhere near what people like were thinking he was going to be. Yeah, he had like a 15, 16 year career. Yeah, very like very respectable. Like I'm not throwing any shade to that, but I'm telling you, like I'm looking at his stats. Um, just from the ones I've seen, like in his best year, he averaged like almost 15 points a game. And they are when I tell you they hyped this man up like he was going to come in the NBA and drop 30 a game. That's how they were they were acting he was gonna be. Uh very talented guy, but just never got to that level whatsoever. Uh now by any other metrics, like if you said this guy had this, I mean, like you said, he had a long career. He was very productive, not. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, he's just uh, was nowhere near what they wanted him to be. Sort of like a Harrison Barnes now, <laughs> very similar Carolina players here. Yeah, second overall pick, they whiffed on that one. If you needed a forward, you could have went with Danny Granger or David Lee. Oh yeah, put some respect on David Lee. He was a fun player to watch. I wonder if David Lee, if you would think David Lee had a better career. Than Marvin Williams. All right. Uh, all, Probably. Two all-star appearances. Yeah. NBA champion, David Lee. Yeah, didn't he win with the Warriors, I think? Yep. Yeah. Two all-star yeah. appearances, average more points. David Lee was like the step below of Kevin Love there for a while. Yes, yeah. He was like, uh, we have Kevin Love at home. So, nah, let me talk to you about. <laughs> let me talk to you about the dark times. Okay, but we all thought maybe it might be the the light coming back, but it was the dark times of the Boston Celtics when we hired a man out of the University of Kentucky named Rick Pitino. <laughs> That's where this is going. <laughs> this is a great bust. I love this. It's a coach. Uh, well, or do you have a player in mind? I too, have a that, player that ties into this. Oh, uh, the coach was a bust. I'll say uh, that for you. Horrible. <laughs> I've never seen so many trades in my life. Nice job. Trade away Chauncey Billups. Real smart there, idiot. Uh, it was smart for Chauncey. Johnson. Huh? <laughs> it was smart for Chauncey. He won the championship. And Joe Johnson. Uh, so 
Rick Pitino is coming into the league. We got a chance at the top pick. We don't get the top pick. I was so excited that there was a pro- prospect of getting Tim Duncan, probably up there with Johnny last year, thinking, you know, there is a chance you could get Wemby. I I feel your pain when it comes to this. Yeah. Yep. So we draft a guy. No, no, I will say, uh, we got we still got a pretty great kid. Yeah. And I draft. Yeah, he's he's been really good. So we get we get a guy. We draft him out of Kentucky, sophomore, Ron Mercer. Watch Ron oh, Mercer. Yes. I didn't think he was that bad. I was like, okay, you know, they're talking about him. And he just never amounted. And it didn't help that we all of a sudden traded him two years later. So that was kind of my guy that never really did anything. And I was like, wow, this is going to be like our new beginning of everything. Ron Mercer is going to be the guy that we're going to build around. We're going to do something with. You know, good NBA career. He averaged points, but was he? He was never that that guy. And it may be because we traded him real quick. Yeah. Mm. And well, he, we'll see. He had a fall off after after a while too. I remember when Chicago got him. I was like, "Yeah, Chicago's back." No, they weren't. I want to see your Ron Mercer, and I want to raise you, Sean May. Oh, geez. Sean May on a very loaded Carolina team was really good. I have a, I have a, an appreciation for stocky basketball players. Uh, Charles Barkley is one of my all-time favorites. He, 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 stocky is a good yeah. description of him. Sean May was the same way. Very talented, incredible soft touch. Uh, I he was my favorite Carolina player on that team. They had Raymond Felton, who was also very good. A uh, very great, very awesome team. But he literally went from he. I think he. I think he also had injuries. In fairness to him, but considering how high I thought of this guy, he had one season where he averaged double figures, and that was it. I mean, he goes from averaging like almost twelve a game uh, to like a, a giant drop off to barely getting four a game. So. And he was a scorer. That's what he was. But he was also kind of coming into the NBA as the game was slowly changing because uh, he was definitely more of an inside player. And he sort of got Greg Monroe out of the league, too, on the same way. You know, Greg Monroe, for those who don't know, was an incredible inside player. But he just had terrible timing when he came into the league because they were turning away more. You had to have a jump shot to mean anything anymore. And he did not have one of those. No, it was a, an amazing inside presence, but the league just passed him by. So that's sort of the same thing that sort of happens to Sean may here. Uh, very sad for me because I put a lot into Sean may stock. I was very excited when, when Charlotte drafted him, oh, which is a recurring, a, a, a reoccurring thing where I'm completely disappointed. I was just talking about Sean May because somebody asked me who Rashad, uh, Rashad McCants was. Oh man, and I was yeah. Like, and I was like, they were on a. He was on. I was like, he was on a really great North University of North Carolina team. And I was like, with Sean May, Raymond Felton, and those guys, and they were like, oh, okay. Felton probably had the better overall career out of the three, but none of them had a, an amazing career in the NBA. No. Here's another guy that. He, I think he, he probably fits more. I don't know where he goes, but he was drafted third overall. No all star appearances or anything else. And I would say a solid player, but I thought this guy was going to be the second coming of like something great. And that's Rafe LaFrance. Yes. Yes. Dallas Maverick guy. Yeah. I thought he was going to be the game changing center and set the new standard. And he never made an all-star appearance. I mean, he put up good numbers, but he just wasn't as he, I know he had an injury, but he was just never like there. I remember when Boston got him and I'm like, hell yeah, it's time to go. Let's go. We got this guy. And he just never did anything in Boston. Uh, 
like I said, no all star appearances, didn't play all, you know, touch and go when it came to playing time and anything like that. And I just thought, I thought maybe he could be like, I'm not saying exactly, but like a Jokic type player. Like yeah. A guy that can just pass the ball, move around the ball, still score mm-hmm. inside. But well, also had a jump shot. Out. Yeah. And I don't know if it was that knee injury or what, but he just never succeeded in that. Like he averaged decent numbers. Like his highest is almost 15 a season, but I thought it was going to be more. Yeah. And 15 for a center back in the early 2000s, not for a starting center, not the best for most guys. If you're going to be an elite guy, that's going to make an all-star game considering also who was playing center at that time. Well, speaking of not the best, uh, let's talk about Adam Morrison. Oh, can we? He should be uh, on my list, but I think I stopped it. I stopped it after 2003 because I got depressed. Again, guess who drafted him? Uh, but in fairness, in college, the hype behind him was on the levels of like Caitlin Clark today because yeah. people would follow like how many points is Adam Morrison going to score in this game? It literally would be like that because he would drop 30 to 40 in college games. And uh, he was appointment television because he seemed like a very unique guy to the facial hair and everything like that. It was like his uh, facial hair was almost, <laughs> dare I say, iconic That's uh, during his career. Uh, and I was very excited when Michael, this is like one of the first decisions Michael Jordan made for the for the Charlotte team. And there were other players that, of course, they could have got, uh, but they chose Adam Morrison. He had diabetes, too. Yeah, yeah. But two-time champion, Adam Morrison. <laughs> Isn't that wild? He literally played for like four seasons, and two of those was with the Lakers and won a championship twice. Who could have? Now, when I say that, he barely averaged two points a game, and he uh, didn't get a lot of playing time. So, Like his best season was, was basically his first season where he, he, he almost got 12 points a game. Here's another – I know he played for the Bobcats later on. And if I would have picked somebody from this, that I was like, this guy's going to be a beast. Tyrus Thompson. Yeah. When he laid down, I forgot who he blocked, but when he blocked, when he put up that block and he's not like, Oh, he's six foot 10. I thought he was a little bit shorter, but when he blocked that dude, I was like, wow, this guy is going to be it. And, do you know what he was? Not it. <laughs> Which is great if you're playing tag, but if yes. you're playing basketball. <laughs> you you got to be it in basketball. Yeah. Especially when you get waived by the Bobcats for an, <laughs> via the amnesty clause. You are not the best. Right. Yeah. Sad. Sorry. Sad. But he's better than me. He's better than me. I will put oh, all these players are better than I ever was. It's the Brian Scalabrini thing. I'm closer yeah. To, oh, yeah. Good I'm closer God, yeah. to LeBron than you are to me. Which is true. <laughs> it's very true. Yeah. I want to see, I brought this up at work because somebody mentioned Brian Cardinal. I want to see Brian Scalabrini and Brian Cardinal go around two on two and face people to see who would win. One of my favorite things to do is just to, uh... Randomly drop a name of a random NBA player that nobody's heard of, like Adam Keefe. <laughs> I just love to do that every once in a while. <laughs> Speaking of white guys who didn't do much in the NBA, Adam Keefe, <laughs> Utah Jazz. Now you could blame this next guy, I don't, well, later in life, on the Kardashian curse. But in 1999, when Lamar Odin came out, I said, this guy is going to be in the GOAT conversation. That's how hyped I had him. And I was like, how do the Chicago Bulls draft Elton Brand over Lamar Odom? Lamar Odom was sort of like a taller LeBron before LeBron shows up. He kind of could do everything. And he was like 6'10 or something like that. The dude was really good there for a while. And I really thought he was just going to be more than just... I mean, he was a very good six man and played an yeah. integral role on those 
championship teams, but I thought he was going to be the guy. Like, yeah. I just thought he was going to be the guy no matter where he goes. I was like, he is going to save the Clippers. The Clippers are going to be the team, and he just was never that at all. It kind of makes me sad. Once again, no all-star appearances, but dems the breaks. I'm going to raise your sadness for my ultimate sadness here. My all-time favorite Carolina player ever was Psycho T himself, Tyler Hansbro. <laughs> Drafted by the Pacers. Love that guy. Uh, had a legit, his biggest superpower was that he, and I'm not even just saying this, he never gave up. That guy would throw his body around. Think, um, he had a motor, like, you know how, like, one of the biggest attributes of Dennis Robin was his motor? Yeah. Right. He, he, that was, he was on that level. I promise you in college, he was on that level. Uh, very famous shots of when he got bloodied and he just kept playing anyway. Like, his face was through a blood, like, he was Ric Flair. And he just kept playing. So I was very uh, Paisano's pizza. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tyler had his face bloody by some Egyptians. <laughs> <And> <laughs> if you don't get that reference, please go check out the, just watch the video of Ric Flair and yeah, Ric Flair at a, at a restaurant recently. They're not making fun of Egyptians. No, no, no. Just, it's just what it's long story. Yeah. Uh, Tyler Hansbro. I was like, this guy, I don't think he's going to be like the best player on the team, but he could be like the second or third best player on the team is what I thought, right? Yeah. He's going to be he's, he's going to be that guy who's going to get you. A, I thought like a double-double was not out of the question. Uh, he was going to be the guy like if a ball was going to be loose, he was going to uh, – like one of my favorite things about Larry Bird even was the fact that I'm not – Larry Bird way, way better than Tyler ever was, so I'm not even yeah, – But you know where I'm going with this. Larry, the very famous – Videos of Larry Bird running after loose balls and not giving up on those, right? Like, he literally cracked his head going for one one time. Uh, definitely gave himself a concussion. You were looking at him at a kind of a poor man's David Lee type, Kevin Love type thing. Yes, yes. And I thought he could, I thought he had a lot of potential, uh, mainly because I didn't think he would ever give up. And early on in Indiana, he was sort of kind of starting to live up to that. He was being that. Uh, but then, like, listen to these numbers as they drop off. Uh, his, his first season, he is eight and a half uh, points and four and almost five rebounds. That's not bad for less than 20 minutes a game for a rookie. Yeah. And then his next season, he actually hits double figures for an average and a little over. And he's still barely getting 20 minutes a game. So he's getting more involved. And the season after that, it drops a little bit, just under 10. But then it goes to seven points a game, 4.8, uh, 4.9 points per game, then, then under four, then under three points per game his last year. Uh, and it just, I'm like, man, what happened to this guy? It just sucks. I thought he was going to be so much better than this. I think now he does a lot of stuff for the Tar Heels. Like that's what he does now for a living. He actually works for the Tar Heels if I'm thinking right. Uh, but uh, man, just the hype that I personally had for this guy. Like I had so much stock. You wouldn't believe I still have, this is a brag. I still have a, a lot of Tyler Hansbro basketball cards. Are they going to put my kid that I don't have through college? Do you have a fireplace? <laughs> because if your power ever goes out, you might need those. I just can't <laughs> do it. I even got a jersey. I even got a I patch. That might be against the law, though, in North Carolina. Just Oh, I get, yeah. You can't do that to Tyler Hansbro. Unless you're a Duke fan, then I guess you're allowed. You call up the power company. Hey, we lost power. We got no heat. I'm going to have to burn my Tyler Ambrose, car Ambrose cars if you don't get here. They're going to be like, we need power to that house now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nobody burns that. <laughs> Next thing you know, within two seconds, everything just turns back on. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, those are, the, those are the five that immediately came to my head when I was thinking – Players I thought were going to be very awesome, and for whatever different reasons, they just did not live up to my personal hype for these guys. All right, I got a, I got a couple more here. This is probably the one that hurts the most. Where I thought this man was like another LeBron Jordan. <laughs> he fell so far away, and I think this is one of those guys. I want to say is. 
style over substance. Okay. Is 2000. Los Angeles Clippers select with the third overall pick. Darius Miles. Yes. I am a huge Darius Miles fan. Same. I have plenty of his rookie cards. (laughs) I thought this man was going to be definitely go conversation. Number one, you know, like, and he just never was it, but he would show what seems to be flashes. I don't know if he could. That that was the most frustrating thing about him. I think (sighs) is that like he had all the tools. And he did have a it did say that he had like a career ending injury, but still though, he just never like even when he was healthy, like his rookie year in Los Angeles, and I know Los Angeles, oh, that came out too, is that clipped. Uh Los Angeles is like a giant shit show at this point. Yes. Still, like poverty franchise. Like I gotta tell people, like the Clippers are a poverty franchise for as long as I could remember i mean now they're better but before yeah. but even then like he only averaged 9.4 you know points a game in 26 minutes his best was in portland he, and, yeah know, when he got to portland he was very solid yeah, but he was but he was never but, what you would think that, he would be there's yeah. none of these things like even portland cleveland when he got to cleveland again with ricky davis i was like damn they're going to tear it up who needs the, you know, who needs LeBron? Because I think the next year or so, LeBron was coming out, and then I was like, oh, you know who needs LeBron? They need <laughs> the Cleveland, Cleveland Cavs. Yeah, Cleveland needs LeBron. They, they're not going to get by on Darius Miles. He also nice. has a great uh, film role, and I was like, oh man, he's in films. I remember going to uh, Lasertron, and I remember putting my my code name is D miles and stuff like that. And, but, and I get I, it. He, he broke your heart. Like Tyler Hansborough broke mine. He like <laughs> destroyed it. Like to this day, I love Darius miles. Yeah. I'm going to probably start playing LeBron's rookie year in NBA live. Oh yeah. Yeah. See if I can't build a team, I might have to get Darius miles. I, I, you know what? I think I just might have to get Darius Miles. You would do what I would do in the early uh, NBA Live games, where like you couldn't. I don't think there was a creative player quite yet, but I would take player. But you can still play seasons. Yeah. So I'd be like, I want to take, I want to trade for some of my favorite players, put them on this team, and they're going to average twenty points at least a game because I think they can do it. <laughs> <laughs> the most stacked Celtics teams in that. Uh, the first one with Shaq, it's not NBA Live because we went through it. I think it was like NBA Action or something like that. Yes, yeah, yeah. Oh, I used to stack those because you could trade anybody. I had Jordan. I put in Stockton on my team. Oh, yeah. You, you wouldn't believe the number of championships the Hornets have won if I was in charge. <laughs> uh, so my next one in 2001, I could have went with Eddie Griffin, but demons. I got to say demons. Yeah, guy. yeah. But here's another guy that I think style over substance in Jay Richardson. Plus two, I think he did some horrible things. Is did he really? Guy? Jay Rich? No. Look, you keep talking. I'm going to look him up. I thought he had like a battery charger. Was that somebody else? I'm not trying to put anybody... But yeah, I thought this guy was another guy coming out kind of in the same thing where I think you get so yeah, charged with reckless driving, speeding and failure to use a child seat. Mm. Oh, he did that in 2009, not while he was playing. But I really thought he was going to be something Oh, yeah, he's got a lot of stuff. But it's after, it looks like after his playing days. I thought he was going to help Golden State become Golden State again. And he did. He was he was also sort of the combination of, I think Vince Carter was sort of this way too, of uh, sort of being able to do both at the same time, a dunk that was finessed and powerful at the same time. Yeah. 
which I think is something Vince Carter did very well. Uh, but Jay, uh, Jay Rich would also do that. I just don't think he ever... He was never that guy, I felt, like, on a team. Right. He was always, like, like second fetal. Uh, fetal. fetal. He was second fetal. He put up points. I cannot deny that. He averaged 17.1 points, but I never thought for what he is and where he was drafted. So I should go and talk about this. When I pick one of these guys, I pick on how high they were drafted. When yeah. I was doing this was how high they were drafted, how good I thought they were going to be, and what are their accolades. If you're the fifth pick and I had them higher and you could be like, well, what about Eddie Griffin and Kwame Brown? Well, I thought Jay Richardson was going to be better than them either way. Uh, but you have no no all-star games or anything like that. I got to put you on the list. And like I said, I thought Richardson was going to be better than Eddie Curry and, and Kwame Brown. Paul Gasol, I was like, why are they trading Paul? G- why would you trade Sharif Abdul Rahim for some for some guy? You know, like why would yeah. you give away Sharif? But so that's where I go. Oh, I'm a big I'm a big Sharif fan, by the way. I, I love Sharif Abdul Rahim. He ruled. You know another name I saw on here? Stro Miles Swift. Stro Miles Swift, yeah. You know, another name you haven't talked about, which is gonna blow me away. Johnny yeah. Flynn. <laughs> Moving on. I can't believe you haven't talked about Johnny Flynn. That kind of blows me away. I'll you know what? I'll save him for the end. Okay. Like I said, I ended it at 2003. Oh, that's fair. He's like 2000. He's like, yeah, 2010s, I think, right? Somewhere around there. Yeah. Basically, when Steph kind of comes into the league, I'll I'll talk about him. He got injured, though. He had an injury problem, damn it. Niagara Falls Finest, Johnny Flynn. I mean, I, if, I think we just talk about him now uh, <laughs> because honestly, I'm looking at his stats. His first season did have a lot of promise. Yeah. He played almost the entire season. He only missed like one game. And he averaged, he didn't even play 30 minutes, and he averaged uh, almost 14 points a game. That's not too bad. No, he, oh, I can't remember. I and think... and almost, and he had a little over, and about four and a half assists a game. That's, that's pretty good. He was injured at some point, I heard. Like he had a. Oh, he definitely was. If you look at his games played, he goes from 81 to 53 to 11 to 18. Yeah, he had that's a, games played a season. He underwent a hip surgery in 2010. Surgery caused a decline in production. Yeah, so that was. I mean, we have all kinds of. Um, who's the uh, oh Jason? Uh, oh, Jason Jason really? Williams, who had who had a lot of promise coming out of Duke, and um, got he wrecked his motorcycle and it destroyed his career. I seem to beat. I thought oh, this guy was going to be the greatest rim protector, yes. the greatest rim protectors ever, and nothing. Here's a guy though that I did jump into the hype round draft time, and another another guy I thought maybe was going to be like a Jokic, but Jokic before Jokic. I'm going to say the same. I think the other thing too is I love saying his name. Nikolos Skittish Feely. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I thought he was going to be something great. He was great. At- was, for every Jokic and Giannis, all these great, awesome uh, foreign players, you get players that didn't pan out like him. And uh, um, Mil- you know, Darko would be another one you throw in there who was a lot of hype. And- Man, do you think about – that's another huge what if – because when I got Darko knock, so we can. <laughs> that was my. Well, oh, I mean, the Pistons were already good when they got that number two pick, and they could have had so many incredible players in that draft. I mean, they could have got Carmelo Anthony and Dwayne Wade. Because uh, it's obvious James is going to be taken first, but the number two pick yeah. in that draft is still freaking good. Would you, and poor Darko. <laughs> if they draft Carmelo and they. Because that was a heavily defensive team. Yes. That's and why he would have been perfect on there. That's exactly what I was thinking. I mean, if you could kind of work him, Tayshon, and rip into a rotation. Yeah. That's, that's that's killer right there. That's I think a lot of people were like, oh, well, they could have got D. Wade. Yeah. But I think Carmelo was probably, oddly enough, 
the best fit, even over say a yeah. bench or a wave. Because he would have he wouldn't have to worry about any of the defense stuff because that was covered. No, he could just run. Focus, his he just focus on yeah, just focus on putting the ball in the hoop, which is what he excelled at. I mean, he's probably definitely. I mean, he still got up there almost like thirty points a game, but he's probably oh yeah, yeah. thirty points even easily. Like he's, I think he's gonna kill it there. If you don't gotta worry about the fence and you're running a little rotation and you could keep him good to solid minutes, like even rest him. Yeah. Could you imagine a prime mellow off the bench? If you, I, he probably would have been pissed, but could you imagine a prime mellow coming off the bench and to go and just go out there and and score? Don't yeah. you know stand in front of a guy, play the defense that you can, but go out there and score. We need points. And then with yeah. him and Rashid Wallace, that's oh man, yeah. That's a that's a team. You're winning you're winning another championship. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh they didn't, but oh well they we won one the next year in two thousand four. That's when they won that one, but it is what it is. That's a big what if. How do you feel about? I'm just gonna go look at other ones. <laughs> uh, ben Gordon. I feel like he had like really good seasons early in, didn't he? Like he was very promising for the Bulls. Sean Livingston probably could have been something more. But oh, oh was, man, yeah, he was. But that was that was definitely injuries for him. Yeah. Yeah, because he he had to overcome those injuries to to have the career he even had. I'm just looking at different ones. See if there's anybody else. You said Marvin Williams. I had big hopes for Channing Fry, thinking he was going to be more. Yep. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Very talented big man. Sheldon Williams is another guy that got that never did anything. Is Duke like the worst school to draft out of? In a way, like there's, I think there's it's, a lot of guys that were. I feel like there's a lot more guys that were really good at Duke. That, I think your, I think your Dukes and your Kentuckys run from the, and this is a good problem to have, that they have talent that go to those schools that can make the NBA, but there's so many of them that they're most of them are not going to pan out to what they should be. I mean, I, in fairness. You know, I, in my list of just five, most of them are Carolina guys who didn't pan out. So, like, even let's see, I thought Joe Alexander was going to be something too. 2008 to the Bucks. I mean, just look at now, Ben Simmons is a great example. Oh, my goodness. That's like, crazy. I can't, I cannot explain to you how good Ben Simmons could have been. Uh, and he just, I, I mean, he's had back issues and stuff, but also he's had some. I want to say like undisclosed mental stuff going on. That's really derailed what he what he could have could have been. Markel Fultz, where there's a lot of stuff behind him too. Yeah, but he's sort of he's he's is he number one overall? No, no. Gotta no, look no. at his career. Right, yeah. Now I mean, you're not wrong. He was a number one pick, and he from that aspect, yes, you're right. Definitely a bust. But I will say, in his defense, he's sort of considering how far he'd fallen. He's starting to turn around a little bit down there in Orlando. Evan Turner, I thought, was going to be a perennial all Yes. Yeah, he was in that uh, Greg Godin team. Okay. Ohio State. Yeah. I just look back. Okay, so what draft was that? So we talk about – I mean, we're not going to get into it, get into it for what ifs. So a lot of people talk about 2009 that the Timberwolves could have had Steph Curry. Now, let me throw this to you. The Grizzlies could have had James Harden, but nobody talks about that. Is it because Harden? I think it's called Harden is very divisive as a player. Steph is almost like Steph is kind of one of those players where even if you're, you don't like him, you kind of give him his flowers still. Uh, James Harden, despite the fact that you cannot deny the numbers he put up. You just can't. Uh, he has a play style that doesn't necessarily, like, it's very, 
ISO centric, despite the fact that he would drop 10 assists, it's still feel like he yeah. was very ball dominant. And there's so many videos of when he's not involved in the play where he just stands there. Which you can never say about Steph. That dude constantly moves. Would you say the biggest draft bust probably that we've probably could ever see is Anthony Bennett? Yeah, number one pick and man. Just garbage time. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. Uh, just like he had so much hype and promise, and yeah, Here's didn't another, amount to nothing. Another injury guy. Uh, he he got dropped from his G League team. <laughs> another injury guy, Jabari Parker. Yeah, that's he would have been on my list if it weren't for the injury thing, uh, because he had a lot of like he had really good seasons before that, and he was going to be on a really good Milwaukee team. Yeah, if you would have had him and Giannis, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think you're. You're probably trying to get Dame, but I don't think it's that big of a deal to get Dame. Uh, agreed. Agreed. Yeah. But that is it. Those are our draft bus. You know, big draft bus guys that we had way more hype promised for yeah. that guys we put stock in and uh, we lost money. Yes. We should have sold, and that's why I don't say a player is going to be good or great anymore. And I don't, you don't know or anything because it makes you real, like you said, it makes you realize you you just don't know, right? Yeah, we talked about it the other day. Is Luca still Luca if he goes to the Hawks? I don't know. See, it's all I, about. Uh, I think where you get drafted to has just as a lot to do with anything else. You know, as much as I would obviously love to have Wimby. On my Hornets team, I still think he could have put up numbers. For, it makes sense that he went to the Spurs. You know, it's it just makes sense. Uh, scripted? I, I would great? never. I would. I would never say that sports are not real. It's still real to me. Damn it! <laughs> it's okay, fake <fame>, baby. <laughs> you know, I saw put wrestling as fake. Still kind of breaks my heart. <laughs> it's not fake. Not that splash that Nia Jax did. <laughs> That's how you know it's not fake. Those ribs really obviously got broken. Oh, jeez. That poor, that, poor, that poor girl. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I mean, it's just kind of the nature of sports. You know, there's just so many. You just never know how players are really going to turn out. I guarantee you nobody thought. That uh, Jokic, I mean, literally when he was drafted, they were playing a Taco Bell commercial, you know, yeah. famously. And look who he, he turned out being a multi time MVP and an NBA champion. So look at the Kyrie draft. That's the only draft, I guess, in NBA history where the first pick and the last pick has played in an all star game. Him wow. And, yeah. Him and Isaiah Thomas. Yeah. Yeah. Who Isaiah Thomas is another one we could have talked about. Good God, he was good. <laughs> Yeah, he's, he was crazy good, and all that stuff with his sister was so heartbreaking. I, uh, oh, man, I I really liked it. I really did. He's a very fun little guy to watch play. I did, but in my mind, he was a defensive liability. Well, yeah, he was like five foot seven. <laughs> Johnny likes him because he was like, "Oh, Muggsy, <laughs> come to me." He did bring. He did. Yes, he was a better scoring Muggsy Bugs. <laughs> Yeah, I love Muggsy. You the mug you put some respect on Muggsy's name. I I do. I do. I'll fight I'll fight over Muggsy Bugs. <laughs> <laughs> I I put respect on Muggsy's name. All right, good, good. I do. Good. I do. All right, I'm trying to calm down now. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> as Johnny calms down, that is it. Let us know who you held, you know, way too much hype in or stock into and hyped them up to the point where they might have broke your heart or your friends might have made fun of you with me with Darius Miles. But with that being said, good morning, good afternoon, and good night. And I still think Adam Morrison can end up doing something. With the 13th pick in the 2009 NBA draft, the Indiana Pacers select Tyler Hansbrough from the University of North Carolina.